In this episode, I will be looking how China is integrating Africa, infrastructurally, economically preparing Africa as the next manufacturing hub in the world. As the African continental free trade area now in the implementation phase, Africa is poised to become a major economic hub. Please like and share the video with your network. Africa is heavily fragmented, geographically and economically. The continent has 54 sovereign countries and 16 trade zones, more than four times the number in South America and triple the number in East Asia. It takes 24 African nations to aggregate $1 trillion in GDP, far more than any other region of the world. Direct flights are few in the continent and flight time are long the longest in the world, on average at 12 hours between cities, including connections. Additionally, intra-African trade is extremely low and currently accounts for only 10% of all commerce on the continent. This is far behind more developed regions like EU at 61.7%, NAFTA at 50.3%, and Asian at 24.3%. Transportation and communication infrastructure for intra-African trade is less developed than those that connect Africa to the rest of the world. The lack of interconnecting infrastructure across the countries makes it harder and expensive to move goods within the continent. The inauguration of two new electricity generating units in Zimbabwe's Howenge power station last month was not an unfamiliar scene when it comes to major infrastructure projects in Africa. There, in a rural corner of the southern African nation, Government officials and the Chinese ambassador gathered to ribbon cut and load the expansion of the coal-fired plant meant to reduce power cuts in the country and Beijing's role in funding it. The project, backed by roughly $1 billion in Chinese loans, years before Beijing stopped funding new coal-powered projects overseas, is one of the continent's numerous big-ticket projects bankrolled by Chinese lenders under leader Xi Jinping's Hallmark Belt and Road Initiative. The impact of those funds is felt across Africa, where residents in major cities like Lagos, Nairobi and Addis Ababa now transit daily via railways, highways and airports built in recent years with Chinese loans and often by Chinese construction firms. Now, as the global infrastructure building spree enters its second decade, there are questions about how Beijing will choose to direct the initiative in the years ahead and whether it will downsize funding amid new challenges and signs of a recalibration. Experts around the world says Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is increasing intra-African connectivity. The China Belt and Road B and R, initiative is a $900 billion project that connects Asia, Africa, and Europe and includes 71 countries that account for half of the world's population and a quarter of global GDP. Africa has more to gain from the B and R initiative given its infrastructure funding gap of 130 to 170 billion dollars a year more than 10 percent of the whole continent's gdp across the continent chinese-backed railway port and motorway projects can be found at various stages of completion some of the infrastructure projects highlighted in this video showcases china's role in building and financing ambitious intra-african connectivity as part of the bnr China has built and financed the $3.6 billion Mombasa Nairobi. Standard Gauge Railway has reduced travel times between the country's two most important cities to 4.5 hours and helped Kenya push its proportion of freight trade up towards its 40% target. The Mombasa Nairobi line is expected to eventually link Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and even South Sudan and Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, China has built and financed a $4 billion Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway that connects the landlocked country to the maritime trade routes of the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea. More than 90% of Ethiopia's trade passes through Djibouti, which accounts for about 70% of the activity of its port. The 750 km long railway plays a key role in regional economic integration and Africa's integration into the global economy. The railway is the start of a trans-African railway project in which a 2,000 km trace track is expected to connect Djibouti with Ethiopia to South Sudan and will be crossing the continent from the Red Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. 
Beyond railways and roads, China is also financing and constructing ports in different parts of the continent. Tanzania's Bagamoyo port, which will cover about 800 hectares, is expected to become Africa's largest port, capable of handling 20 million containers per year, with an estimated cost of $11 billion. A Chinese government construction firm expects to complete the port by 2045. The port will service cargo to and from landlocked Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, Ethiopia, parts of Zambia, and the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, once China's other regional rail projects are put into place. Previously, the BNR initiative was primarily based in East Africa, but President Xi Jinping's last visit to Senegal in 2018 put West Africa on the BNR map. The Thies Tuba Toll Highway is one of the projects that will become the pilot section of the road transportation network of West Africa, which will not only greatly enhance the local traffic capacity and improve the balanced development of different regions in Senegal, but also serve relevant landlocked countries such as Mali, Niger, and Chad as their main passageway to the sea. Africa is the second fastest growing region, a growing young population. About 52 cities with population of 1 million and above people, a very urban population which is expected by the year 2030 to rise by 50%, a continent endowed with natural resources and with huge market opportunity. Bridging the infrastructure gap in Africa is therefore extremely vital and China's importance in the region cannot be overstated. Infrastructure has a crucial and multifaceted role in promoting sustainable development, especially in poor countries where infrastructure gap is the largest. Chinese investment is gradually narrowing the infrastructure investment gap in the continent, building and financing mega infrastructure projects. China is playing a vital role in improving intra-African infrastructure, which is key to achieve a much needed regional integration. And as a result, a region-wide economic growth. Africa's economy is inherently dependent on agriculture, making up more than 32% of the continent's GDP. The region can unlock its true potential by following in the footsteps of every modern economy and transcending to manufacturing. Chinese finance special economic zones are pushing Africa to actualize its industrialization goals. Chinese finance special economic zone says are spurring manufacturing in the region. Majority of Chinese investment in the region is in infrastructure, but there is also a growing number of Chinese manufacturing companies moving to the region. China's own experience in industrial development through special economic zones offers valuable lessons for African countries who are partnering with China to scale up industrialization through CES. Ethiopia is on track to become Africa's manufacturing hub thanks to Chinese financed and constructed says. China completed the $250 million Hawassa Industrial Park in nine months between 2015 and 2016. The park has attracted 15 leading textile and garment companies and six are already exporting to the international market. The China Civil Engineering Construction Company, Sec EPSEC, is building three other industrial parks in the country, also financed by Chinese loans and investment. During his visit to South Africa, President Xi Jinping signed an agreement to build a $10 billion metallurgical complex in Musaina Makado SZ, South Africa. The complex is set to produce 3 million tons per annum of stainless steel, 3 million tons per annum of ferrochrome, and 500,000 tons per annum of silica manganese, which will spur South Africa's stagnant economy. Steel output will be exported to China. South Africa is already a major exporter of metal alloys to China and in countries in Southern Africa. In Kenya, China's Guangdong New South Group built the country's first private industrial park in USC in Gishu in July 2017 at the cost of $2 billion. This park will be an important component for Kenya's Zhejiang Special Economic Zone, SEZ, which is partially inspired by China's SEZ development model. China continues to promote the development of industrial parks to support Africa's industrialization. China Road and Bridge Corporation, CRBC, also signed a deal with Kenya to develop a $1.5 billion special economic zone, SEZ, with room for 3,000 enterprises that will have an intended industrial output of $4.5 billion.
billion. Rwanda is also a beneficiary of Chinese investment in SES. Chinese companies in various sectors have set shop in the Kigali SES. CNH Garment is a Chinese textile company that is helping Rwanda achieve its Made in Rwanda initiative. In 2016, the company exported goods won two cents billion dollar, two cents billion dollar to a combined market of China and United States. C and H continued large scale production for local market and exports to neighboring countries. These are some examples of African countries benefiting from Chinese finance says, as well as Chinese manufacturing companies moving to the region. But the big question is, should Africa fully rely on Chinese companies to realize their manufacturing potential? Many argue that with the rising labor costs in China, labor-intensive industries will move to Africa making it the next manufacturing hub. But this is not necessarily true. A study conducted by researchers from Peking University indicated it that few Chinese manufacturing firms are relocating as a result of rising wages in China. If they are relocating overseas, Southeast Asia rather than Africa is their preferred destination. Instead of relocating to countries with cheaper labor, most of the Chinese companies are turning to automation. China has rapidly become a global leader in automation, where sales increase between 15 to 20 percent on average per year is expected for industrial robots from 2016-2018. Africa should therefore not bet on Chinese manufacturing fully moving to the region. With a fourth industrialization revolution 4IR in effect, Africa should rethink its industrialization strategy to ensure that they plug into the global value chain. First and foremost, African countries should utilize the Chinese-funded infrastructure and SOZ to strengthen their regional value chains. Besides investing in manufacturing industries, governments should be proactive in adopting new technologies, starting off with achieving 100% electrification failure to which the region risks being left behind in yet another industrial revolution. As I finalize this episode, Chinese finance says are vital for the region's economic transition from agriculture to manufacturing. African leaders should be aware that this rate of splurge might not be happening in the next 30 years. For instance, governments should take advantage of the current investment as they work alongside each other to build sustainable regional value chains while adopting new technology like robots to ensure that they are not left behind in the fourth industrial revolution. If you are new to our channel, we want to thank you for watching. Let us know if China has made any significant contribution infrastructurally in your country and how such a project has made a difference in the lives of your community. We are looking forward meeting you in our next episode. Keep the conversation going.